Alright, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to update your Core 2021 Planeswalker decks with the new Zendikar Rising cards. Let me emphasize however that I am recording this fairly early after release, so I do not know what the prices of these cards are going to be, so I might give you multiple options. Also, we're going to be super brief in this video since I'm covering all 5 decks at once. Starting off with Garouk, we only lost one single card if you followed my upgrade guide, and that's Bark Hydro. We don't have a perfect replacement for it. You know, we have like Tajuru Paragon, which is kind of close. You know, it's a, it's a two mana, three, two. So we get three power for two mana, but all of its text is completely irrelevant because we're not a party deck. So basically we have one less toughness and we lose the Hexproof ability, which is basically just a, a strict downgrade. So not great. Alternatively, you can just go with Scavenging Ooze, which is a little bit slower, but probably one of the better green creatures in Standard right now, because it can eat Uros out of the graveyard, it can get really big, it gains some life against the Mono Red Aggro deck, so Scavenging Ooze, really good, technically not as aggressive, but it does get bigger, it has more utility, also just a great card in general, so I think that's a perfectly fine replacement. We also have like Wildborn Preserver, it's less popular in Mono Green decks, but it is viable in this spot. It's a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, but it can get bigger as the game goes on. And it can also be a surprise blocker, which isn't bad. So, Wildborn Preserver, also fine in this slot. I also recommend taking out a single forest for one of the Kazandu Mammoths, if possible, if they're cheap. But basically, we always want to play this as a land. This is a forest in our deck, but every once in a while, if we're flooded, it's a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, and that's fine. I also recommend replacing the Lothosaurus. I said that in my original video that I didn't like this card. I still don't like this card. Gym Razor's better. Better. Questing Beast is better, lots of better cards than Dilophosaur, but uh, you know, I complained about that enough in the original video. Anyway, moving on to the Chandra deck, we lost two cards to rotation, Runaway Steamkin, and Light Up the Stage. What's funny is we kind of have a replacement for both of these in the form of Magmatic Channeler. So it can be a two mana 4-4 four, four, just like the Steamkin, and it lets us dig for more gas just like Light Up the Stage. So it's kind of funny. It's basically Steamkin plus Light Up the Stage in one card. It's not exactly the same, of course. It's, you know, it's, it's not going to be a 4-4 four, four all the time. We have to tap it to get the card which means we can't attack with our 4-4. So definitely not saying it's as good as both, but it's kind of similar. Interesting that we got like a pseudo combination of both cards in one. I don't think this is perfect though. I probably wouldn't play more than one copy, but I do think one copy is fine, especially in this deck. Remember, we are a Spells Matters deck. We're playing a lot of spells. We're trying to build up these Spellgorger weirds and whatnot, so it's not bad. We also got some new aggro creatures like Akum Hellhound, Wayward Guide Beast, and Kargan Intimidator, but none of these quite fit with our deck because remember, again, we were looking to get Steam Can, get weird in play, get a bunch of counters by slinging spells so we weren't really a mono red aggro deck and i don't think these are perfect i do think the best bet right now is to go with four crash throughs crash throughs are great in this deck just because it allows us to put counters on our stuff and we just draw another card anyway so it's not a big deal we could probably get one or two of the magmatic channelers and then personally i would fill the deck with more board control spells like blitz of the thunder raptor fire prophecy scorching dragon fire or my personal favorite a new card royal eruption is actually really good it's basically kind of like a bad lightning strike just because it has to be played at sorcery speed but it can be kicked for more damage and i think that's actually pretty decent in this deck moving on to the bosri deck if you followed my upgrades we lost two cards the venerated loxodon and sadly raised the alarm however we do have a pretty sweet new addition to this deck in the form of luminarch aspirant it lets us put plus one plus one counters on things every turn, which works really well with Bosri's Lieutenant. And we also got Felidar Retreat, which can let us put counters on all of our stuff every single turn, or at least every turn we can trigger a landfall, which isn't guaranteed to be every turn. But we do have new ways to put plus one plus one counters on things, which is great because that's kind of what we were doing. But I'm not sure if Felidar Retreat is perfect just because we do have the issue of potentially not being able to trigger the landfall enough. It maybe would be really good in a green white version of this deck with Cultivate, Cultivate, and Felidar Retreat go perfectly together. So maybe you can start with like Cultivate, Bosri's Lieutenant, Felidar Retreat, that's like your top end, Luminarch Aspirant at the lower end, 
with like maybe that wildwood scourge stuff like that i could see this deck doing something like it seems okay but that's a different deck but anyway we can replace two raise the alarm with two omen of the suns it's not as good it's slower we can also go with rally for the road which kind of does the same thing but it also allows us to gain a bunch of life so that's relevant and both of these allow us to get those tokens at instant speed which we really like to do it's just one more mana compared to the raise the alarm which is disappointing but they do work it's it's it kind of works it's just slower unfortunately and then the loxodon can go straight into the luminous aspirant if you can afford it again i don't know what the price of that card's going to be and it also should be noted that the main set bosri it's actually very cheap and that card also works really well in this slot it has a plus one put a plus one plus one counter on something so both of these work perfectly fine in the spot of venerated loxodon moving on to the liliana deck this is sad because we didn't technically lose anything to rotation this deck is 100 rotation proof from the video that i made when i upgraded it but we did lose cauldron familiar to the ban hammer and by extension witch's oven is also not great we didn't technically lose it but it's just not as good without cauldron familiar so first off we can replace one of the cats with a serrated scorpion that's easy which leaves us with three cats and four ovens i actually have two variations that i think are worth trying so the first off is three cats go into three arch fiend vessels and the four ovens go into null priest of oblivion so this deck is a life draining kind of reanimation deck that was kind of the idea with the original deck a lot of the cards would drain life and there was a focus on returning things back from the graveyard so both of these work great with that strategy they both have lifelink so they can both drain kind of by attacking but archfiend when it gets reanimated puts out a 5-5 flying demon and then the no priest first off it's a two mana two power lifelink and menace so the menace is relevant you can just play this as a two drop and it actually works really well if you have an aggressive hand and you just want to go fast drain the opponent really quick but in the late game it can reanimate that archfiend vessel turn it into a 5-5 give you a 5-5 flyer and a two power menace with lifelink pretty good and remember we also have call of the death dweller that's already in the deck so that can also reanimate the archfiend vessel and maybe in this build because we're a little bit more focused on reanimating mire triton could also be really good to try to get archfiend vessel into the graveyard and also if you happen to open any of the agadim's awakening that is perfect for this deck it's a land that's a reanimation spell 90 percent of the time you're just going to want to play this as your land you're going to try to find a turn when you can play it tapped so it doesn't matter like if you have a one drop and a three drop you're going to play it on turn two you know something like that get it into play tap so you don't have to pay the life if you can but in the late game it can be a reanimation spell can bring a bunch of your stuff back which this deck loves so yeah agony's awakening pretty good but it's looking like a pretty expensive card and then the less good option i think is to go with a more black devotion build replace the four ovens with gray merchant then you can take one cat out for the ayara and the last two slots can go into removal spells of any kind literally any removal spell and that gives you more of a black devotion style of deck but it's a little bit slower kind of clunky but that's an option i've actually played a lot of mono black devotion and standard it's okay i like gray merchant gray merchant's pretty sweet i also think it's time to swap out eliminate for heartless axe heartless axe weren't very good just because they couldn't kill hydrid crosses but now that that's gone a heartless act is much better now after rotation although there are a lot of decks running felidar retreat so if you're seeing a lot of that maybe eliminate is still fine but heartless act seems much better now and then finally the tafiri deck we lost a few cards to rotation sphinx of foresight code of constraint radical idea ha <sighs> it's too many cards but fortunately we do have some pretty sweet new additions to this deck first off i think seagate stormcaller is one of my most favorite and the most underrated card in the set this kind of reminds me of bone crusher giant when bone crusher giant was released or at least when it was spoiled uh before eldraine was released i was super hyped about it i thought the card was amazing and people didn't really believe me they're like that's eh, not that good i was adamant that bone crusher giant was going to be a really good card and i kind of feel the same way about this card i feel like people are vastly underrating it, it seems really good two mana two one is fine but it can copy a spell 
just copying like an op. If you play this, being able to scry two, draw two is pretty sweet. So I actually think this card is really good. It's just likely to be very expensive. I checked right before recording this and it was like 12 bucks. Um, prices are weird right now, so I don't know if it's going to be, you know, that price permanently, but unfortunately, I don't know if we can afford it on a budget. We can, however, replace Code of Constraint with Into the Royal, which is another way to stall, and it allows us to draw cards into the Royal. It's looking pretty good in this format. Early game, if you're being attacked by the aggro deck, you can just bounce it. Don't worry about drawing. In the late game, you can bounce and draw, trigger your draw stuff. Seems decent. And Radical Ideas can be replaced with Deliberate. This is basically an expensive op. It's two mana instead of one, but you scry two instead of scry one, so it's fine. Radical ideas were great, but I think Deliberate is fine. And then Sphinx of Foresight is difficult because, man, it's hard to find a replacement for this. Sphinx of Foresight was so good. You can add Nadir Krakens and Stormwing Entities. Both of these are fine, and the Kraken can actually be pretty good against aggro decks. Getting a 2-3 out against, you know, the Fervent Champion and stuff is pretty nice. There's also a new Sphinx. It actually draws cards when it enters, so it technically works better with our strategy, but it's not as big. It's a 1-4, and we can flip it into a 4-1, and technically that's fine if the opponent doesn't have flyers, but if our opponent does have even just a 1-1 flyer, it can't attack, or doesn't attack well. It can attack as a 1-4, I guess, but it's not good. It's it's like, it's almost very similar to Sphinx of Foresight, except it just doesn't work nearly as well. So, I don't know, it's okay. I think I'd rather just have, like, another Nadir Kraken or two, personally, but I don't know. That's an option. I also think Charm Sleep can be upgraded to Bubble Snare. Technically, you need four mana and kick it to tap the creature, but if the creature you're targeting is already tapped, it does the same thing for only one mana. So, like, 99% of the time, this is just better. It's only going to be worse against like something with vigilance and then it's only one mana worse which you know it is technically worse but that's a small trade-off for something that can be played on turn one if you're you know facing an aggro deck like if your opponent has fervent champion turn two they have another fervent champion having this be at one mana is actually pretty nice just to stave off that damage you know so not bad and that's it Hopefully that helps you guys get started on the new format. We didn't have to change much and there are plenty of different options for all of the decks. I do recommend looking into the spell lands because they're all pretty much good. Like if you have a basic forest, you can just take one out for the mammoth. That's fine. And that's pretty much true for all the colors. They're all really good. The mythic flip lands are really good. And having like a single copy in won't hurt, but it gives you that chance to have a spell if you're flooded. So definitely recommend looking into all of those if you happen to open any if you have them on your arena account definitely worth putting into the decks so there you go guys hopefully that's helpful thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one